More Than Just a Hammer, Humanities Project by Colin Yaney, May 17, 2012, World Literature. Tragedy and sorrow, hate and misery, disgust and anguish. That was all that I was feeling right now. The words still pounded around my head like thousands of angry bees swarming out of their hive. William, I'm sorry. He's not coming back. Why now? Why not sooner or later or any other time other than now? Dad is gone, William. You're the only other builder that this city has to look up to. Those words, those ear-shattering, useless words, will haunt me forever. The hours flew by, but my eyes just refused to close. There I was, all alone in my room, with the memories of my dad's death still biting at my pride. It was going to be a long, agonizing night. Morning came with a sense of relief and justice, but not joy. That feeling was still lost, lost and forgotten. I opened my eyes, and before I even had a chance to breathe, I heard a calm and soothing voice that sounded ever so familiar. William, breakfast is ready. Coming, mother. Even though our family was not the richest in England, my mom could still make better breakfasts than any king or queen could make throughout the entire 15th century world. I quickly raced downstairs and placed myself at the dinner table, craving for one bite of her scrumptious homemade biscuits. While eating, she and I had our typical conversations, but today the talks moved on to a more sensitive subject. My mom started the discussion. The governor came by early this morning, wanted to know if you were going to accept the job. I just sat there and stared at my food, too scared to give her an answer that she didn't want to hear. William? Hmm? I lifted my head and looked her in the eye. Her expression told me that she wasn't too happy. I'm not sure, Mum. I know that I was assigned to our family to build this cathedral, but I don't really want to. I just don't think that- William, hold your tongue! There was a long and dreadfully silent moment between us. Listen to what you are saying, my boy. It was not only in our family to build this cathedral, but in our destiny. Why do you think your father gave his life building this structure? It's important not only to us, but to the city of Halton as well. Once again, I sat there, in complete solitude. Still unsure of what to do, I looked down at my feet. A blank expression stretched across my face. I thought about the moment, how important it would be for everybody in this town. With my back completely against the wall, I finally realized that I had no other choice. All right, Mom, I will lead the construction of the cathedral. With a mighty smile stretched across her face, she filled me in with the details that the governor told her this morning. I still wasn't quite sure how I felt about the whole situation, but before I knew it, I was assigned to meet the construction team in just a couple of hours. I finished eating breakfast, got washed up, grabbed my things, but just as I was walking out the door, my mom grabbed my hand and pulled me back inside. Before you leave, William, I want you to have this. She handed me an old, beaten-up hammer. The handle of it was cracked in several places and looked as if it would break at any moment. The head of the hammer was rusty, dull, and overused, almost like it was made several hundred years ago. It seemed as though one use of this hammer would cause it to wail and scream in agony, bursting into a thousand pieces directly in front of my eyes. What is this? I asked inquisitively. It's your dad's hammer. He used it all the time while working. Several other workers managed to salvage it from the accident, and now that you're going away, I wanted you to have it. I didn't know exactly what to say. I wasn't sure if I should be happy or sad or confused or whatever other emotion a normal teenager would feel at a time like this. Still indecisive about what to do, I could only manage a muffled version of what sounded like a thanks to my mom. With that said, I refused to look my mother directly in the eye and instead gave her a pat on the back. She didn't want to look at me either, and so with our two paths finally diverging, I said goodbye for the last time and wandered out the door. With my dad's hammer in hand, I quickly arrived at the construction site, just in time to see what had happened to the cathedral. The structure itself looked as though it had just been hit by an earthquake, for dozens of buttresses were splintered, balled, and strewn across the ground. Workers were in confusion as what to do, and the only things still standing were a few pieces of brick here and there. Trying not to get too discouraged about the situation, I kept my head high and strutted over to meet my fellow workers. Despite their confusion, all of them seemed to stop working the instant they saw me, almost as if I was the King of England. However, I noticed that many of them were solely members of the lower classes, and after several introductions along with many questions, I quickly figured out that many of them were also volunteers. Why have all you decided to work on the cathedral? I asked. It is what we all want, one man said. All of us know that this cathedral will finally bring happiness to Halton. This is why we need you to help us, William. After your father died, we didn't really have anybody else to turn to. He was our leader, and the construction went into complete chaos after that. We sent messengers to send out word that the cathedral would not be completed unless a new, just a skilled builder was found. You're the one man that can salvage this construction process. 
and what if I fail? Then the city of Halton may never be the same. These words stung at me just as badly as the news about my father's death did. For once in my life, I finally felt as though I meant something. This whole process, the hopes of every person in my home city relied on me. I could not let them down. All right then, let's get to work. Without hesitation, orders were given out to all members of the construction team, and the work quickly commenced. Each person worked day and night, and I wanted to be no different. Even though it was not necessarily my duty to work alongside these citizens, I did want to show them that I was capable of more than just giving orders. Day after day, I would pull out the hammer that my mom had given me and put it to the ultimate test. Pounding nails against wood, slathering mortar across newly made buttresses, and even helping to lay new foundations. Each and every time, however, I could not help to remember the sacrifice that my dad made doing exactly the same thing that I was doing now. How different I was from him when he was alive, but how similar I am to him now that he is gone. It was a sad memory to reminisce about, but I knew that I had to move on. I could not afford to lose my focus for even a split second. The days continued to pass by, and as they did, a recognizable structure began to take shape on the ruins of what used to be an old cathedral. Each and every one of us put our blood, sweat, and tears into the making of the cathedral, and it soon started to pay off. My hammer also served me well, and despite the dull head, rusty, and cracked handle, it just refused to break. It was unlike any tool I had seen before, and I could tell that it was not just the hammer that was doing this. Up above, somewhere in the sky, my father was looking down at me giving me and the hammer the wisdom and the power that were needed to build this cathedral. Thanks, Dad. Despite all of the hard work, time just kept on flying by. Days became weeks and weeks became months, but our progress was finally showing. We were now in the latter stages of the construction process, and the morale, along with the spirits of everybody, began to rise. All of us started to work as hard as mules pulling plows on a field. Nails were pounded into their places, buttresses were hoisted into their respective positions, and walls were erected with lightning speed. Soon after, there was w only one slightly more ceremonial task that needed to be completed. William, we are down to the last nail, one of the workers conveyed to me. Over the course of the building period, all of us were able to gain each other's respect and trust, and nobody wanted to miss out on the final moment. However, everybody thought it was appropriate that the leader and the head of the construction needed to put the final nail in. Hearing what the worker had said to me, I picked up my hammer and walked over to the location of all the excitement. I looked at the worker who had told me what needed to be done, gazed at the task at hand, and thought for a moment. William, sir? Losing my sense of thought, I looked up at all of the workers and then began to walk to the final nail. For the first time, I had a clear picture of what I wanted to do in life. Upon reaching the nail, I stopped directly in front of it, looked up towards the sky, and whispered, This one's for you, Dad. At that exact moment, I used that old, beat-up hammer to place the final nail in the wall of the cathedral.